You can sell a style t-shirt. You can sell a tie and dye t-shirt. It's the same t-shirt. We encourage a lot of people to register their businesses. I am a firm believer of collaboration. Hello and welcome to the Member Spotlight. Today we're going to be interviewing Incubator Nest Hub. My name is Michelle Jury. I'm the Asset Communications Officer. I miss you, Vata. It is a pleasure having you. So first up, I'd like to just uh, ask that you kindly give us a brief description yeah. of the Incubator Nest Hub, how it started yeah. and what was behind the creation yeah. of Incubator yeah. Nest yeah. Hub. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, we, we are, are very passionate about businesses and especially startups. I had a startup started in, in the last four years ago and it failed flat, literally. <laughs> and so I began wondering what really did I do, do wrong, you know, and I was working with other business people as a consultant with a lot of businesses. And so I wondered how come my own business has failed? And there are lots of simple things. It's just working with mentors, working with someone else, someone looking at your idea. And hence the fact that I started the Incubator Nest Hub to support startups who are thinking about ideas who are actually into the one year growth stage a bit yeah. and they want to actually have a community of where they can actually try and look at if this startup is working or my day is working or not. Yeah. So that's why we started Incubator Nest Hub. For me, I'm very passionate about seeing startups and ideas coming up and also creating jobs because I believe that startups actually create jobs because once you have an idea and you've never done anything, you're able to employ one or two, three or three people. So that's how Incubator Nest Hub started to support startups. So since your inception, how yeah. many startups have you been able to incubate? Yeah. To date? Yeah, to date. So and when did you begin? <laughs> so interesting question, uh, Michelle. We, we began in 2020. Wow. Just when coronavirus was starting, you know, actually in March, I remember very well. Yeah. And I kept on thinking, am I doing the right thing? But I said, you know what, this was, was something I wanted to do and hence I began it. So we, we had our peak actually in between March and June because there was a rush because most people wanted to start businesses and they had ideas and they don't know what to do. Others were fearing their jobs were being closed and they just needed a comfort place. So people signed up a lot and we were doing a lot of free trainings and people signed up. But interesting enough, the sign-ups that were done were more of women and I'm sure we'll talk about that later. <laughs> No, but I mean, we, we, we saw a surge of a lot of people signing up yeah. until from March to date, we've been able to train about 400 people wow. and 400 businesses means that people who actually, we did trainings, even we had one hour trainings, we have others that have been in the incubator for, for three months, so we have different categories, but in total we're able to do 400, which can sometimes look good, but I think for me, I, I call it because there was a lot, of, a lot of fear because of how COVID was going to affect people. Yeah, so there yeah. was this rush, there was this yes. rush because yes. they were like, hey, I'm, I'm probably going to lose my job. Exactly. And it's funny how you said it picked from March yeah. and June in yeah. that period, yeah. because that's when actually most businesses started closing yeah, exactly. on the but yeah. it was picking up. Yeah, people. yeah. So let me ask, these trainings were virtual or physical? Yeah, yeah. So all of them were virtual. Mm -hmm. we, we actually did all virtual trainings from using Zoom to uh, to Microsoft to, you know, to Teams. You know, it was all virtual. Yeah. Uh, we never had even one meeting, I mean, face to face. Apart from actually, we, apart from one meeting we did, and it's because we, we did it from the village area yeah. where we have women coming up, and it's just not so village, it's just outcast of Thika. Mm -hmm. So, those ones were the only ones that we did, uh, you know, a physical training, yeah. but the rest of them were all online trainings. So, you um, now you've just mentioned something I'd like to now yeah. expand on a bit. Yeah. So, you don't just do trainings in Nairobi, you also yeah. do trainings outside Nairobi. Yeah, yeah. So for Incubator Nest Hub, since we, we have really, really worked on being virtual, we're able to move to any other place. Yeah. So we have our trainings, even our, our sessions actually, even targeting people even up to Mombasa. So we have a wide coverage. We also have at some times even having people from Tanzania and Rwanda wow. getting into our classes. So we, we being virtual has helped us a lot uh, to, to, to move away from just geographical regions yeah. uh, to other countries and to other regions. You what know? are some of the challenges that you have been able to help startups solve? One of the biggest challenges has been how to come up with a good uh, business idea. Mm. You know, when we started, we thought the issue, the challenge would be money. Yeah. But interesting enough, the challenge would be, how is my idea good? Yeah. 
Can I start it and it does not fail? Now, going back to COVID, no one wanted to fail in business. Yeah. Everyone wanted to make it because either they're going to use the small resource they have because they don't even think there's any resource. They didn't care about capital or getting someone to fund them. They just wanted to be able to survive. Yeah. So their challenge was, is my business idea good? And that's why we started. Is your business idea good? How do you make, know that your business idea is a good idea? How do you identify your customers? How do you identify uh, your market? And how do you strategize to make sure that your business will grow? And that was it. For instance, if I came to you and I was like, Ivy, um, this is me, Michelle. Yeah, yeah. I do not have a business idea. Yeah. I just want to go into business. Yeah. yeah. I, I just want to sell clothes. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe it was not sustainable. Yeah. So what tips? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I, <laughs> Michelle, we have many people who come in and say, I have one, two, three, four, five ideas. Yeah. And that's where we begin from. And we begin by just assessing what really is their passion. Because I always say that you have to have passion for what you want to do. It's good to start business for survival, but you also want to have business that can survive and have impact for your community or your environment or your business, you know. So for us, we start by looking at really what is your passion? Sure. What is really the thing that you can do? And we look at your history. And that's why we begin looking at your history. What have you done in school? What have you good at? What really makes you tick, you know? And those are small things that people don't look at even when you're starting. Yeah. And from there, we can narrow down on the business ideas we've come from and narrow down to one. Then from there now, we can start working on that business idea to grow it further. Huh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, yes. that, that's very, yeah. like, I'm very impressed because I'm like, wow. Because, you know, we literally don't think of it when we're starting businesses. At all. It's the Kenyan, sorry to say this, but yeah. it's the Kenyan mindset. Yeah. Like, oh, so it's so such a debauchery. Exactly. Such a debauchery. exactly. But we never think of what's the one thing I would do even yeah. if I didn't get money. Yeah. And I still have exactly. like, the passion to continue. Yeah. Yeah. And Michelle, there's nothing wrong with starting a business the same way as the other person. I always say it's the innovation you do in your business. I always give an example of a t-shirt. We can always be selling t-shirts, but you can sell an Ankara t-shirt. You can sell a style t-shirt. You can sell a tie and dye t-shirt. It's the same t-shirt. The only problem we have in Kenya is the innovation part. Innovate on the same business. And you're able different. to make money, which is very different. Yeah. Understand your customer and innovate around them. Mm -hmm. So now you become different and you have a competitive advantage over everyone else. And that's where it sets you apart from any other business. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's, those are insightful thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to ask, uh, can you tell us about the entrepreneurship support program mm -hmm. and its impact so far in the ecosystem? Yeah, yeah. I think for us, we've seen <clears throat> we've seen a lot of businesses start, and it's something that we want to quantify now, beginning of 2021. You know, we were training a lot, but we want to see really how many people have started and really registered businesses, and they're growing. But we've seen an impact in terms of starting starting of businesses, mm -hmm. and also creating sustainable business ideas. Yeah, which for me is critical. So you can count that. Secondly, we've also, thirdly, we've actually seen also business registrations coming forth. We encourage a lot of people to register their businesses. You realize even the people that were coming in training, it's not that most of them did not have businesses. Most of them have been doing side hustles. Yeah. They have a job and they've been doing something on the side. Sure. Never register, no system, nothing. So if I sell today, that's fine. If I don't sell tomorrow after one week, that's fine, you know. Yeah. So they were able to register their businesses and create, you know, growth around them, you know, and create a whole model, system model for their own business. So those are things that we saw as an impact for us. Registration of business, business ideas that are good and are fundable and also sustainable. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, people that really understand can start businesses and you're able to create jobs. So for us, that was very key. So let me uh, just drawing from what you said. Mm -hmm. Is one of the services that Incubationist offers, like you offer strategy for businesses, like especially if once the person identifies what they're good at mm -hmm. and now they started it and they're mm -hmm. like Ivy let's start this mm -hmm. is there a business plan that will be created yes so so we, we, we are actually the, the the only partner with growth wheel oh. so growth wheel has been uh, giving us uh, not giving us but basically we use their system mm -hmm. to look at a business idea on a 360 view mm -hmm. meaning we're able to look at uh, the business idea the operations of it the financial part of it 
and the marketing part of it. Mm -hmm. So that's a 360 view of the entire business. Mm -hmm. So that helps us to actually create a business plan out of it. Yeah. So for every member who signs up, we're able to put them up in the system and we're able to create, as we keep on having our coaching sessions every week, we're able to create a business plan, which at the end of the, uh, of this, of the incubator session, they're able to print it out and it becomes their business plan. So now that's different because what happens is, Many people start businesses by writing a business plan. Yeah. And most of sometimes it's cooked from somewhere or it's put up from somewhere and they don't understand it. Yeah. The difference is for us, for every startup, we work with them in terms of creating their business plan. So when it comes to marketing, they're able to go out and do their research and if they work on it on a, more on a systematic way. So now what is what's happened is they're able to own their business plan, True. not have someone actually write for them their business plan because they're able to walk through their entire business. And by the time they're starting, they're able to know what to implement and what to change with the whole deal. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and it, it does, it does, I, I do see it because um, when you own an idea, mm -hmm. you're more likely to actually take responsibility yeah. for when it's succeeding, when it's failing, and you're like, okay, Absolutely. let's change this. Absolutely. Because when you own it, you actually now do something yeah. about yeah. it, you yeah. go active. Yeah. And also not that, Michelle, once you understand how your business runs, up to the financial point, which most people, business people run away, <laughs> you're able to know how your business will operate in terms of finances. True. What happens in the Kenyan system is mm -hmm. we start businesses mm -hmm. and we don't even understand what how the financial management works. You don't know where the registration is. You wake up, there are taxes. You don't know where the taxes are. But if you're able to start by understanding what it means needed yeah. in the business then you're prepared to know exactly what how you're going to run the business where you're going to get the money from and how you're going to source for your capital so you're starting from a point of understanding not of a point of just trying it out but to be honest with you um the carry the filing yeah most people don't know how to do it exactly and it's it's more like you have to get an outside person to do it yeah. but i'm now understanding that once you understand the finance part you're actually able and you understand the other processes the hr processes yeah you understand what's needed yeah you're able to get and i'm sure this is covered for in the program. Exactly. exactly. Don't even go far, even carry for it. Just look at sales and marketing. People don't understand how much they need to sell in a day to make a profit or not. Just that. So you have a business, but you don't know, I need use seven units to make money this week. You know, they have no plan for that. You don't have a plan. Just like, so yeah, let's start. you're selling clothes. So you just begin a shop, you put a, you put a shop with clothes, then you're targeting, you have no idea who you're targeting, how many you're targeting. You don't understand that if you don't sell five clothes in a week, you won't pay, you won't pay rent yeah. or you won't be able to have money to pay your salaries. So those are things that we, we, we look at when you're starting so that they're able to understand where they need to begin. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> what areas, okay, you have talked about the areas of entrepreneurial yeah. that it covers, yeah. it covers HR, finance, yes. Yes. and yes. also HR, finance, and marketing. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, and so what are the different packages, like the payment packages for this yeah, program? Say, yeah. yeah, the different rates that are Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for startups, basically people who have ideas, we charge 20,000 Kenyan shillings. Mm -hmm. uh, for people who have a uh, business between one year and four years, mm -hmm. and they're still startups in a way, we charge 40,000 shillings. And this is for a duration of uh, three months. Yes. Yeah where we're able to look into different aspects of their business mm -hmm. and work it out, yeah. So you're able to, incub to be incubated for, for three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So what, what, what you're entitled to is you have a coaching session, a weekly coaching session. Mm -hmm. You're able to use our system to come up with your business plan. Mm -hmm. Be able to actually work with also other coaches because sometimes even finance, legal. So we're able to, 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 to offer you that, those services. Mm -hmm. And you're entirely, you have a lot of, you know, a lot of sheets that you, you can work with mm. to create your business uh, sheets, you know, to use when you start your business. Wow. Yeah. That's, <laughs> this is really yeah. like informative because yeah. I think in Kenya, having a mentor is something that most businesses don't consider. And it's, <laughs> yeah. and it's so good, like, at least now there's a guiding, who would have thought that 2021 yeah. we would actually be able to know, like, yeah. just be mentored around these practices. Exactly. And yeah. it's, I think it's a great innovation. Yeah. So yeah. I just want to ask, is there a criteria 
that you use when admitting startups to these programs? Yeah, yeah. Is there like qualifications that they must have, mm -hmm. or I can be a mama mboga and come to you and be like, I yeah, need. yeah. So yeah. for for the incubator nest hub, our target is small and micro. Mm -hmm. So you can be a mama mboga and come in. You know, as much as you want growth for your business, we're okay with you. But one criteria we, we're very, very, very uh, passionate about, mm -hmm. you have to have an idea mm -hmm. and you have to have passion to work on your idea. I always say that's very critical because you, you have ideas, I know, but do you have passion to work on it? Mm -hmm. Business is hard work. So the hard work starts by working on your plan then before you get to your business. So that for me is very critical. You have an idea and then you have a passion for it. So is there like an sorry, is there a, like an admission period where you actually sorry to test passion? Yeah. <laughs> and great. Yes. So we, we usually have a 30 minute session where we, we speak we speak to potential people that want to come in yeah. and they have actually applied for the program. Yeah. So for 30 minutes, we're able to understand their, their idea, mm -hmm. we're able to listen to them. And that's why we say yes or no, you know, whether they need to go back and think about the idea, so it doesn't waste. Some people just want quick wins. So they want to, uh, do you have an idea that can work? Those are questions we get. And I'm thinking, no, you need to work on your idea, not my idea or incubator's nest idea. So that's how we see them, you know, and you're able to get the people that are interested in and the people that are really, really trying to just survive or just trying to get something to do out. So for us, we're looking into really passion to create your business and to create impact even in the community. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. So, and um, do you help startups get access to funding? <laughs> now, <laughs> That is a very good question because let me tell you, startups, startups are the most risks of vast businesses or risky businesses in Kenya or even all over the world. Because of their lifespan? Yeah, of course, because of their lifespan and also because of the fact that they're starting. Yeah. So no one knows. Many banks don't want to give you money for startups. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. And it's something that in 2021 we're trying to work on because how we've incubated our next step then for me, I'm very assured that if anyone comes in and they want to be able to fund such businesses, then they are able to actually be sustainable because we're able to come up with a pipeline of very sustainable businesses and work on different sectors, depending on our funders or our donors, then create a funding, you know, a funding uh, channel for all the people that are in the startup processes. And we have met fantastic ideas in the country. It's just they need someone to push them, to get a grant to just push them to start, even if it's a payable grant. So those are some of the things that we're still looking at. But also we're really looking very keenly to do crowdfunding. For me, I always say we've been doing crowdfunding. Yeah. I mean, we, you, you come, your brother casts you, they want to start a business, you give them 20,000. Sure. They go, they start the business or they not, it fails. You don't know. Yeah. But imagine giving it to an incubator mm -hmm. and having your brother come into the incubator you're actually assured that your money that you're going to give yeah. is going to be sustainable yeah. and the business is going to be sustainable. Sure. So why not come into the incubator instead of just giving out money yeah. and then it's a, you know, it's a win or lose kind of business, which you don't know. So we, we want to actually encourage people to stop trying out ideas. Let's work and look at the ideas. Yeah. Then from there, you're able to start your business from a point of knowledge, not a point of just trying out. So is this, yeah. some, is this something that you want to do like in 2021 to approach people who would be, you know, would actually help in actually getting the funds? Yes. Because there are people who are willing to invest. Yes. But then the problem is they're not sure whether to invest in this exactly. project. Yeah. But knowing that incubest, uh, sorry, incubatorness is a weather subject, yeah. Yeah. they would be like, I can trust them with my money yeah. and it's going to be put to good use. Yeah. Yeah. And I would see returns. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we want to do that. We, last year, actually, we, have, we had a test ground for one business person that gave us money to give uh, two individuals, yeah. each Kenya shillings 50,000 from the businesses that we incubated. And we've seen it working because what happens is it's just a matter of making sure that the business idea is good. Then from there, we're able to, you know, fund the different streams yeah. of where income can come from. So we funded someone who actually started an impressor shop and we're able to buy computers for them and give them float 
for their business and the business is doing fantastic well and then also we're able to find someone who's started juice a juice business you know online juice business and we're able to start with the machines and everything and we're able to fund that specifically then we'll be able to monitor them for the next one year yeah. so we're able to find out that you're just not giving money we're also monitoring we've started from looking at the looking at the idea funding then monitoring for us that's going to be a success so we want to see as many people that we can attract to do that kind of funding sure. and you know invest in such businesses yeah yeah wow. yeah and so um with women being a core part of the entrepreneurship ecosystem yeah what structures have you put in place to enable that these ventures actually thrive yeah because yeah. i feel like it's a sector that's really overlooked yeah and it's it's just I don't know why, but um, yeah. what is incubator this do? Yeah, I, I think I'm very passionate about women. I, out of all the businesses we've got, 80% are for women. And I like women because women don't like failing. So they would rather walk into the incubator for the next three months until they have a good idea, then move and invest. Yeah. So which for me is a, is, a, is a fantastic thing. So for us, what we're doing is we, we want to work more with women groups a lot. You know, in 2021, we're really looking into working with women groups to support them. Even women in churches, we, we've started women in churches. We want to move into women in 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 in, 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 in rural areas, yeah. so we can, as much as possible, make sure that their ideas are working. Sure. And I'm very passionate about rural women, yes, because they have a lot of a lot of you know capabilities and also potential that needs to be nurtured to make businesses that can work yes they're doing businesses every day they go to the farm and they, they they farm they take their produces they go to the market sell them but if imagine if you're able to create a sustainable businesses around them how much impact you can make out of that place yeah so for us rural women are for one of the people that really really want to target in 2021 when is your next goal <laughs> so we we, we, we we you know us we are virtual yeah. so we don't have a cohort that starts on a certain point oh. we, we start at the point where people sign up and we were able to do that remember we're able to do individual cohorts oh. or individual in terms of individual incubation mm -hmm. and also we're able to do group incubation mm -hmm. so we take them as on a role on a roll on basis yeah okay. yeah yeah okay yeah so if for instance i came to you and my friends came to you yeah our ideas were actually sustainable yeah and we actually said hi ivy we want to be able to actually just uh do this project and yeah then, and you would actually start a cohort with us. Yes, that's what you're saying. yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and also, basically, also we, we we work with partners, so they're able to say we have this group of women. So can we can you come and we start a cohort? Then we're able to start from there. I think we have a lot of um, you know capacity yeah. within ourselves here yeah, to do that. Okay. Yeah. So, what opportunities as a member of ASIC, as a new member of ASIC, mm -hmm. congratulations and yeah. welcome. Yeah. What opportunities have you been able to benefit from being an ASIC? I think for me, it's been the trainings and the exposure. Yeah. That, that for me has been amazing. Uh, when you get into this kind of businesses, you want to a place where you have to hear what people are going through and also the challenges, you know, and you realize that your, your challenges are just not different. Yeah. We just need to come together and do that. And for me, that has been a good thing. Yeah. And also another thing also, uh, we are trying to see how to do it in 2021, is also work with other partners within ASEC. Because yeah. we, we have a lot of um, people, accelerators, that are there. I'm not planning to go into acceleration soon, so I want to be able to partner with that. I, I, I am a firm believer of collaboration. Sure. So for me, being in ASEC is a place where I know I will collaborate with a lot of people so that we're able to learn a lot. So, But also the opportunities that uh, ASEC has given us, that, that for me is fantastic. I, I would never have known some funders are there, you know, some opportunities, whether you get them or not, you apply, yeah. but at least it's, it's an eye-opener yeah. for you each and every day. So for me, ASEC has been one of the best things I did, I made a decision for in, in the year 2020. What opportunities in this year 2021 mm -hmm. would you like ASIC to facilitate? Yeah, I, I, I think as I'm, I'm in, a, in a place where we're looking into startups, okay. there are not many people who are funding startups, not even supporting, let's just support. It yeah. doesn't mean funding also, just support. And I think for me, is I want to see how ASIC can actually support us to look for that those kind of 
uh, partners to work with because the opportunities are there. We, we, we have people that we treat. So how do we get such partners to work with? Uh, not necessarily in funding, also knowledge gap and, and a lot of things that they can come up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So, and what are, okay, lastly, what are your views on alternative financing methods? Yes. as a way of sustainability or as a sustainability factor for innovation hubs. Oh my, I, th I think for me, we, we funding <laughs> cannot run our businesses, you know. Yeah, <laughs> we have to find ways of, of, of you know, of, of making money out of it. True. And I think for me, I started by looking at ways of cutting cost first. Uh, and that's why we went to, into virtual completely. Then from there, looking into areas where we can actually, uh, co you know, co-create funding or co-create uh, options of payment, mm -hmm. even with the, with the cohorts. Yeah. So that for me works out a lot. Because also you don't want to be so sustainable to funders because what happens if they're not there? Yeah. You want also want to create impact also around your environment. Sure. So I'm also looking into to, to showcasing a business development front mm -hmm. so that people actually come in to look into business development in my incubator yeah. rather than just getting you know, getting into the cohort. And you think that um, hubs are big on business development? I, I please just no, <laughs> no, we hardly do business development. Yeah. And, and for me, it's one area that I want to go to. To go to that's why actually we invested in the growth wheel yeah. because we want to go into a lot of that business development. We're able to access, assess a business in a 360 view and look at it and give you a report out of it. Yeah. That for me is business development before even you can go to the cohort session. So we have two areas that we want to balance out. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks so much, Ivy. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having, uh, just sitting down with us, yeah. as ASEC, yeah. and just giving us some insight on yeah. the activities that Incubate Hub is doing. Yeah. We look forward to what you're going to be doing in 2021. Thank you. And we are so glad and delighted to have you as an ASEC member. Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for having me. Want to be featured on the member spotlight? Reach out to us via communications at asic.ke and let us tell your story.